Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is the Little Bean of Me podcast channel. My name is Kaylee, I'm your host. And today, um, I am coming to you from my living room in a lovely little sunny location. It's so beautiful out. But today, I wanted to talk to you about Etsy. Now, I'm going to spill a little tea, be a little... You know, I, I don't know how uh, emotional I'm going to get in terms of like feeling anger, but I just wanted to talk to you about the Etsy change that's coming up um, in the coming days that means for a lot of people um, either making their Etsy shop, you know, not sustainable or not as sustainable as it once was, um, you know, I guess it depends on your Etsy shop and how good your margins are. But Etsy is a, for those who don't know, Etsy is a platform. It's a digital marketplace that hosts uh, makers who are either hand makers or they resell vintage items. Um, and it is supposed to be geared toward crafting and creativity and all of that. And for the majority of makers, um, Etsy is a hobby or it's a side job or it's something to bring in extra income depending on the arena that you're in. So for me, uh, I opened up my Etsy shop. I think I opened my shop. I, I've been on Etsy since 2012, 2013, 2012. But I officially launched Little Bean Crochet Etsy shop, um, like officially on the books in 2016 as a serious business venture instead of just a hobby crafting or selling handmade crochet items occasionally um it became i'm gonna have to shut the windows because it is so loud outside okay i apologize for any noise that's happening outside but it's just too beautiful not to sit in here i did close the windows so um anyway so i launched my etsy shop officially you know, tax ID, the whole nine in 2016, taking it as a serious business venture and building my hand dyed yarn shop. And Etsy hasn't raised their fees in a very long time. Um, it's really common for online marketplaces to have listing fees and also to have uh, sales fees. So the benefit of being in an online marketplace is that customers can go and find your shop organically in a marketplace that's geared toward a certain genre. So for eBay, it's uh, a marketplace that's mostly resale. Um, and then for Amazon, it's also new and used products, warehouse items, books, you know, that whole amalgamation that is the Amazon marketplace. But you can host your, you can have a shop on Amazon and sell through Amazon as well. And then Etsy is geared toward makers. And so it's supposed to be a one-stop shop for people who are looking for quality handmade goods made by small businesses and it's supposed to be this independent fostering of creativity and life you know the whole thing like it, it, they're supposed to be there supporting individual handmakers and a majority of the people who do sell on etsy are sole proprietors or solo business owners who are either taking Etsy as a business venture and using their sh storefront as like their main um, source of traffic. There's some people, apologies for the noise, there's some people who use Etsy as, you know, a resale platform to resell uh, vintage goods, uh, which I don't think is I don't know how, I don't know the comparison. I'm not going to quote anything because I don't know the comparison of handmade versus vintage, but Etsy vintage is also part of the whole Etsy umbrella. And so through the years, Etsy has come up with different ideas and different ways to try and improve the quality for the seller and for the customers uh, by introducing things like unified payments. So all your payments go through Etsy, whether the person wants to pay with PayPal or something else, it goes through Etsy checkout, which is fine. Okay, we roll with that, go with that change. Um, not like you had a choice after a certain point, but um, all of your stuff goes through Etsy checkouts. And then they had Pattern that they launched, I believe in 2016 or 2017, where you could build your own website, which linked directly to your Etsy store and had its own separate structure and fees 
and monthly fee and all of that stuff. So there are different things that Etsy has tried to do to improve that. Um, they've tried to improve their statistics uh, in in terms of you know access as a seller, you know what you can see, how you see it, which I think generally is okay. Um, but it's not astounding. It doesn't tell me everything that I want to know. Um, and I'm a person who likes to know all of the statistics for my shop and I want to know where people are coming from. Um, are they leaving things in their cart? Did they find me as a direct link? Did they find me through Etsy search? Was it organic? Was it paid? You know, how, how are people coming to me? And is my, are my efforts paying off? And then they do offer resources for people who are building their shops. They have a whole handbook, so to speak, where they go over common topics about like marketing and photography and how to build your shop and how to market your shop and all of those things, which is helpful for the new seller. Now, coming in just a few days, um, Etsy is going to be increasing their fees, including and including the fee, like the fee is going to include shipping costs so if you sold an item for $20 and the shipping was five, it would be the same as if you sold an item for 10 and the shipping was 20 and five, 10 and 15. So if the shipping was 15, the fee would be the same. Um, where it really hits people hardest is for international shipping. So if I sell an item, you know, for $20 and to ship it internationally, it is $16. I'm going to get charged more for a fee than it, it would be if it was an, um, a domestic customer. So if it was, you know, $20 for the item and then $5 for shipping. And it also, what, I understand the idea behind it. The idea behind increasing that fee is to be able to have a, more of a revenue stream for Etsy to be able to provide more for, for the marketplace, which is great. But when you're charging fees on something, especially when folks use calculated shipping like I do, I'm not charging the customer extra for their shipping. I might put on a 25 cent handling fee to cover the cost of packaging my product, but I'm not going to charge my customer more for shipping to make up for the cost of the fee because I'm still going to be charged that fee regardless. Um, so it doesn't make any sense. But what, what it is trying to do is to deter people from selling items at 25 cents a piece and then charging $20 for shipping, um, which is kind of like a fee avoidance where they're trying to avoid paying the transaction fee because the transaction fee only applies to the item cost. So it ends up helping with that, but also hurting um, sellers because we don't see that money the money that comes in for shipping the customer is the one who's paying for shipping it covers the cost of shipping minus any small handling fees that may be there depending on your shop um, plus whatever very small discount that Etsy gives for um, postage so anyway that is the biggest change that's coming and then the next change that's happening also is that there are going to be three tiers of Etsy there's going to be Etsy basic which is what everybody is using right now then there's Etsy plus which is one step above which will be $20 a month it'll be $10 a month for the remainder of this year then starting in January will be $20 so for the sake of any example here I'm counting it as $20 and then there's Etsy premium and so I'm going to show you here in a few minutes, I did a breakdown cost of selling 50 skeins of yarn at $25 per skein at an average shipping cost of $3.50. I'm not assuming any international shipping. I'm assuming it is all domestic sales, all individual sales. So 50 items sold in one month on Etsy versus Shopify. So let's talk about the reasons why I decided to leave Etsy um, and I'm going to talk about my business only I'm going to talk in somewhat specifics just about me this doesn't apply to everyone if you stay if you choose to stay with Etsy totally cool I still will be shopping on Etsy but I I have left Etsy for a specific few reasons um, and I'll get into that in just a moment so my shop it has been open for, you know, uh, 
two full calendar years of, of sales, like steady sales. So from June 2016 to June 2018, two full calendar years of sales. Now, in terms of like starting a brand new business and putting all those things forward, my business is still kind of running even, but that's because I've made several investments up front for my business. That's a choice I've made and that's a choice I will live with. Not everybody's structured that way, but that is what worked for me. So I'm still running, you know, in the black, kind of just, I'm, I'm not really making much right now because of those investments, which I expect to be paying off in the next year. But that's kind of my structure. I've made investments up front. I do carry a very small amount of debt, very small, but it's there. And I put all the money that I make back into the business to push forward and to reinvest in either new equipment or more supplies or all of those things and just structure it that way. I have good margins. I could increase my prices more. I've done a couple of small price increases over the last couple of years as I've learned more about my business and what my actual costs are versus what I think my costs are. Um, and also from um, suppliers increasing cost on product. So if I'm purchasing bare yarns or dyes, those prices do fluctuate and I try to structure my pricing margins um, accordingly so that I am being paid for my time and also being paid for the actual products that I'm using to create my hand dyed yarn. So I have good margins, I do carry small debt, um, but nothing crazy, and I'm able to, to sustain my business as it was structured on Etsy. Now I've hustled for the last couple of years promoting, I do this YouTube podcast which I really love and I try and share in the maker community, and I try to be an active part of the community and provide something valuable to the community. So that's a little bit about my business. Now, in looking at my statistics for my business through Etsy in the last, you know, two full years, so from January 2016 to June 2018, I can see the amount of people who have come to, to visit my shop, like how many visits my shop has had. I can see how many sales that I've had, meaning orders, not individual items sold, but orders, and... I can see where those people are coming from. So I can see direct links to my shop. I can see if people are searching for me through Etsy, if they find me through social media, or if they find me in other places or link to me from other websites. And so looking at that, in, in light of this change, I had to reassess whether it was worth it for me to continue to stay on Etsy. What is the cost to benefit ratio? So for me, I have fixed cost, I've set my margins, and what is the benefit I'm getting from staying in a marketplace versus having my own independent website? And is the cost benefit ratio worth it in terms of growing my business or an exposure or having solid traffic from the marketplace? Because that's the benefit of being in the marketplace is that people are supposed to be able to find you there. And so if we are talking about, you know, the benefits of the marketplace, you're paying for those benefits with the transaction fee, you're paying for those benefits with advertising fees, you're paying for those benefits with email fees. Is it worth the extra cost per month to have those benefits? And to me, the answer is no. And I'm going to go into some details why. And I definitely encourage you to look at these things if you're on the fence, if you're not sure if you want to stay with Etsy or not, or if you want to go with a different platform, that is up to you. You have to look at your business independently. What are your costs? You know, what are your margins? And how are you going to offset the increase from 3.5% to 5% for transaction, which includes shipping? And if you do a lot of international shipping, it's going to hit you. So you really should look at those things as you go through. So right now I'm going to show you an example. I'm going to show you statistics from my shop and I'm also going to show you um, the fee structure and what is actually going into this update from Etsy and what we are supposed to be getting out of it as sellers versus what the cost will be um, outside it. And I'm going to show you the example that I used. Um, there was an infographic that was done by a member of the Dyer Business Group on Facebook which was wonderful. And so I ran my own numbers through my own spreadsheet 
to show you exactly what I'm looking at and exactly what you know what might be feasible or maintainable or not um, with with Etsy changing and so what the benefits will be of Etsy plus versus what the cost offset cost will be versus opening a Shopify site and running all of your sales through Shopify and PayPal. So I don't have any experience with other platforms. There's Fibercrafty, which is another online marketplace that's geared toward um, hand-dyed yarns, specifically in my region, my, in my, what's the word I'm looking for, genre? <laughs> I don't know. In the hand-dyed yarn world, in this little orb. Um, and then, you know, there's WooCommerce, uh, which is a WordPress um, WordPress thing and then you can also do Shopify Lite where you just have a button that says you know for sale and it's only like ten dollars a month with the credit card fee and all of that but um, generally people would be looking to go to the Shopify basic plan which is a twenty nine dollar per month thing so anyway I'm gonna show you all that right now I'm gonna do a voiceover and we're gonna walk through all of the numbers and what my decision has been uh, which is to move off of Etsy because to me things aren't worth it But I'm going to show you I'm gonna walk you through what I looked at and how I came to that decision for me and my business and again Your business is your own you have to look at it from your own perspective I do not recommend just jumping ship because you feel like it or you think you want to you really do have to take into account You know your the size of your business how many sales that you're making where your sales are coming from at least on Etsy you can see where your visits are coming from um, and decide if if it's right for you if all of your sales come from direct Etsy search you're you're doing all the trends and you're doing all the stuff like maybe it's not worth it to come off of Etsy maybe that promotion is worth it for you because you might lose sales so take all of this with a grain of salt this is an example that I'm showing from me my perspective in my shop so anyway let's get into the example Hey guys, all right, so let's jump in. This was the announcement that Etsy sent out via email and it is on their website for the fee increases that will be coming as of July 16th. So you can see that there's an increase here from three and a half to 5% and the 5% includes shipping cost. Um, there are three tiers to be had and I'm going to focus on the standard tier, but you can see here that there are supposed benefits to having Etsy Plus. Um, is it worth $20 a month? That's for you to decide, um, but you can see here they do give some frequently asked questions including a breakdown of what the new fee structure is going to look like. This does not include any of the other costs of running a shop, it only includes the direct 5% fee. Um, and then here I wanted to highlight that there is not an influence from being an Etsy Plus in terms of your Etsy search, but you do receive a bonus for being an Etsy Plus uh, customer, so you get 15 listing credits plus a $5 credit um, to advertise your items in Etsy. So you don't get a bump up in your search, but you do get credits to promote. So is it worth it? That's for you to decide. So I wanted to show you here my actual statistics and what went into the decision for me to leave Etsy. This is specific to my shop only. It is, doesn't apply to anyone else but me. And I encourage you to know where your customers are coming from and to go over your cost um, versus benefit ratio and your margins to make sure that if you are going to stay on Etsy that you're able to sustain your shop. So here we're going to look at my data and I'm going to go back and create a custom time listing that goes all the way back until uh, January of 2016 which is before my shop actually officially launched with hand dyed yarn. It actually launched in June of 2016 but for statistics sake, we will just go back and then I'm going to have an end date here of uh, June 16th, 2018, which is the day that Etsy uh, announced the 
change in fee, and I am also not including time after that because shortly after that I did leave. So you can see here a lovely little bell curve of my views and visits over the last two years, and how many views I've had versus how many sales that I've had, and then the traffic sources. So what's pretty cool about Etsy statistics is that you can compare different things, you know, revenue versus orders versus views versus everything, and you can see where your customers are coming from. Now you can't see direct conversion rates, so how many times times an Etsy search resulted in a sale, but you're able to see where people are coming from. And for me, search criteria only accounted for 13% of my sales with an 8% um, from people putting things in their favorites. So the benefits of having an Etsy Plus account or maintaining things with Etsy if I'm not being seen in Etsy search despite good SEO and despite uh, paying for promotions in my listings, then is it worth it for me to stay on a platform that continues to take more money from my profit margin? And you can see here um, in my search, I think it's funny that people are searching for my shop in Etsy search engine and it's the third from the top. So first it's Harry Potter and then it's Sock Blanks and then it is Little Bean Crochet, which is my actual shop name. So here I wanted to show you the um, spreadsheet that I've made comparing Etsy to Shopify. So we're looking at 50 sales per month, individual sales at $25 per sale with an average shipping rate of $3.50 per sale. So not including any um, international shipping, not including, you know, like I'm just averaging um, the, the shipping cost for a single skein of yarn. I'm assuming a single skein. And so the gross sales would be 1,425 US dollars. And now here's where the true cost comes into play. So for Etsy, you are paying $10 to list the 50 items that you just sold. And you are also paying a 5% fee on those sales, which includes your shipping, which would be $71.25. And you can see on Shopify, you don't have those fees. The credit card fee is pretty much the same here. There's a small difference, uh, about a dollar or so, uh, between the Shopify and PayPal fee versus the Etsy fee. Um, even though the percentage is a little higher, it ends up working out slightly cheaper for Etsy, but negligible. And then the shipping cost obviously is the same. What you're charging your customers, what you're paying in shipping, generally, unless you do a small handling charge and also your monthly fees. So for Etsy Basic, there's a $0 monthly fee and a $29 monthly fee for Shopify, but it is still cheaper to go with Shopify by $50 per month. So $311 for Etsy per month on that many sales and $260 per month for Shopify. And so in order to be seen on Etsy, you need to promote your listings, have good SEO, and send out coupons. So these are costs that I added on at the end here, including Etsy Plus. And if you do decide to do all of those things, it still is cheaper to use Shopify by $111.17 per month. Um, this is a very specific example. Here I'm going to change the Shopify fee because I don't pay $29 per month. I pay $23.25 per month because I renew biannually. So I did pay up front for two years, but it means uh, cost savings for me. And then I'm also going to adjust here the amount of coupons. I underestimated coupons. I send up to 100 per, um, per coupon, so per abandoned cart and per um, uh, favoriting. So that's $20. So for me, the comparison is like this. So $126 cheaper per month um, if I were to stay with Etsy versus go with Shopify. So to me, is the cost difference worth it? Is it worth it to spend the extra $126 off of my profit margin when, when I'm only getting a 12.8% return or about a 13% return for Etsy searching? Because the benefit of being in your marketplace is to be able to be searched and found for in the actual marketplace. So here I'm showing you my coupons that I send off, which are small value coupons, but they're still sent off to my customers. And I do have a $10 per month budget for both coupons, so $20 per month, up to $20 per month spent. And if we're assuming that all of our fees are spent, then that would mean $20 per month solidly. So here I'm going through and just showing you again, I'm going to show you in detail um, the search the search portion because that's really 
where if you're seeing a huge percentage of your sales coming in from Etsy search, or at least a huge percentage of your visits coming in from Etsy search, then perhaps it is worth it for you to stay on with Etsy. But for me, it is such a small percentage that I, I don't see a benefit to stay because even with good SEO and paying for promotions, my return is still very small. So you can see Harry Potter is number one, but Little Bean Crochet is number three. Um, so of 106, like 106 times somebody searched Little Bean Crochet to get to my shop and 277 times to find Harry Potter yarn. So of the 3,841 times, you know, the most search term was uh, Harry Potter yarn. So is it worth it? Is it worth it for me to stay? For me, the answer is no, but for you it may be yes, depending on your circumstance. So you have to think in consideration all of the costs that it takes to have your shop and to, you know, what are your profit margins and how will you structure your shop going forward. So I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you later. Bye! All right, guys, I hope that you found that helpful. I really took some time to go through all those things, to put together this spreadsheet, and to show you exactly what was going through my mind when I decided to leave Etsy. <laughs> um, in some tokens, I was looking for a reason to, to leave, you know. Um, if any of you have seen Superbad, it's like I was praying for a fight. I was just praying for a fight, you know. So I was just looking for that reason to leave because I was unhappy. Um, and it's for not only the financial aspect of it, it makes it very difficult to maintain something like that, but also just the benefit there was not the, the benefit that they are saying that there is, it was not there for me, even at minimal cost, at minimal advertising, minimal, minimal promotions cost, the, the actual, like the coupons that were actually sent and the listings that were actually promoted and clicked on, it was not, to spend more money was not going to get me more benefit. Um, and I don't make enough money to offset the cost of saying, well, I just want to do this and I'll just eat that cost and it will come back to you later. You know, when you're operating a very small business on a very small scale, I'm an independent business owner, I do this part-time, I take care of my kids, I have other things going on, and I'm trying to build it and take it seriously and take it slowly, I can't just jump in or I can't just wait for things to pay off. I need to be able to dye the yarn, make my sales, talk to my customers, create content for my customers, and I can't just willy-nilly say, well, I'm just going to blindly put in $20 a month to promote my listings and see where this goes. Because putting that $20 a month in, or $20 per day in to promote your listings may not come back to you, you know, tenfold to, to get that many sales to make it worth it for you. Hey guys. All right. So I'm editing this right now and I just want to add in here, and I forgot to mention it, but that reason is the reason why I'm so upset because Etsy justified their fees and emails saying, well, we're just on par with, you know, larger sellers. We're on par with Amazon and eBay. And they kept comparing themselves to Amazon and eBay as a marketplace. But the seller is different on eBay and Amazon and Etsy, and especially on Etsy where margins are so much smaller. It's not like on eBay where they're selling an item that's worth 10 cents for $10. It's hand makers, people who are taking the time, who are creating something valuable, who are small business owners, who aren't just reselling things or shouldn't be on Etsy. You shouldn't be reselling, you know, cheap Chinese charms for $10 a piece, you know, you're, you're looking at a different seller base. So when they kept justifying those things in emails, it's what really got me mad. And it got me mad editing this because I can't believe I forgot to say anything about it or mention it in this video. But in emails, when Etsy sellers were emailing, the customer service would get back saying, well, the um, fee rate would only equal about 10%, you know, which is on par with Amazon and eBay. 
And even though the fees aren't on par with 10%, because they're not include, they're only including that, that fee, you know, between the credit card fee and the 5% shipping fee and the listing fee, but they're not including the other fees that sellers choose to pay, but almost have to pay to get their items seen in a saturated marketplace. And especially when you're operating on such smaller margins than large resellers who are selling an item that maybe cost, you know, $20 to make for $200 or whatever, like whatever invisible margins there are there, you know, like the best thing like I can think of is like small charms and they cost a penny a piece and people would sell that for like $15 or something. And the margin is just astronomical. You know, a lot of Etsy sellers don't operate at that level, like uh, operate on that margin level. So that's what really made me mad. So I just wanted to interject that here because I'm thinking of it now and it was also a part of the decision of why I left. So, so I, anyway, anyway, it's all a decision for you to make on your own business, on your own terms and decide what's right for you. Um, if you have questions for me, if you want to know more about what went into the decision for me to leave Etsy, then I definitely welcome your comments and criticisms below. It's totally fine. Um, if you did like this video and you found it helpful, please do give this video a like. And if you want to, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel for more content like this. I do try to create content a few times a month um, that's helpful for you. If you have ideas for videos, again, I always welcome those things in the comments section down below. And if you are subscribed, make sure you hit the bell icon because YouTube does not like to send subscriptions to their subscribers unless they've hit the bell. So that's the most reliable way to know that someone has uploaded something new or that I've gone live or there's new content on this channel. So I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I will talk to you in my next video. Bye!